All right, welcome. Today in web design, we're going to be looking at how to take our basic template that we designed in Fireworks that you see here and convert it into HTML and CSS. So the first thing that we'll do is start by getting our HTML file ready. And I'm starting here with my basic template.html. I'm going to first of all save that into the correct place in the projects, PNG to HTML2. And I'm going to rename this as index.html. So that'll be my new home page. Now I can go about begin updating the basic content that I want to appear inside my markup. So what I'll do is I will come over to Fireworks and I'll begin copying over the content into the appropriate places in my template. Okay, so here we have all of our HTML copied over. You can see I have my title tag, H1, H2, some paragraphs, and then my recent photos, a sidebar with an ad to buy leaves, and the footer with the licensing and design information. The one part that I do not have yet is I don't have all of these little photos here. So to get one of these photos out, I need to save it as an individual file. And if I click on it and I hit Control C, Control N, and then Control V, that will give me a file the exact size as that original size again. So again, it's contr Control Copy, Control New, and then Control Paste. And I could save this into my correct folder should be inside of my projects, PNG to HTML, inside of images, and I'm just going to call this small leaf. And I'll save that. Then inside of my main content section, I can create an image tag. And the source would be equal to images small hyphen leaf dot PNG. I'll add an alt attribute. And then I will close it up and close that paragraph tag. I'm going to go ahead and save this and check it in my browser. And there I see it shows up. So now that I have it once, I want to get it two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight more times. And I'll just go back here and copy and paste it six, seven, eight until I have eight instances of it. And now I should see in my browser, when I refresh it, I have eight there. So now we're done with our HTML and we can move on to begin styling our CSS. The first thing we'll do is look at what major colors we want to use for what sections. And we can see that we've got a dark green here, dark brown, dark brown again, and the light, brown, um, light green for the actual site itself. And we also have to bring in our header image here as well. We know that widths, we're using 960 for the whole width. And this main content section here is going to be 760. And the sidebar over here will be 200 pixels wide. So let's go ahead and begin setting up some of the basic content for this inside of our CSS. I'm going to pause the video here because the CSS that we create will look very similar to the CSS that we've gone over in the previous video on how to convert HTML, I'm sorry, how to convert a PNG site into HTML and CSS. So I'll pause it here and add in the styling that I need. Okay, so we're back here and now I've added some basic styling to the site. And you could see to the body, not much going on, changing the font in the background. Have a wrapper so that it sits in the middle of the page, adding a little bit of padding to the header and making it um, compensating the width, which is normally 960 minus 20 on the right and 20 on the left. The height is 150 minus 20 on the top and 20 on the bottom for the padding. And I assign the background image to the header. The main content, I give it some padding and a set width, float it to the left. And the sidebar, I float to the right with a little bit of padding and a set width. The footer is going to be on the bottom and will be the entire 960 wide once you add up the padding on each side along with the width. If we take a look in the browser, it's not quite finished, but we could see we're getting close. Now one problem that we see is that this sidebar here is not completely filled in. And the reason for that is that if we don't assign a set height 
to our page like we did in our previous example, then we won't know this right sidebar will not extend to be the size of the left main content here. So a trick that we could do to complete this is if we apply a color to the wrapper, which has everything else inside of it, then that wrapper will show up as green behind here and we're gonna sort of create the illusion of having a full sidebar. So let's go ahead back to the wrapper. And to the wrapper right here, we're gonna apply it the same background color as the sidebar. We refresh the page saying, ah, because of floats, that is not actually working. So we'll have to take another technique with that to get the sidebar to work. Okay, because of we're using floats in this, the way we are going about it of applying the color to the wrapper is not actually going to work. The reason is, is because everything inside of the wrapper is floated, but the wrapper itself is not. To solve this problem, what we're going to do is insert in a new div into our content, into our page that starts right before the main content. We're going to call it ID content and it ends right after the sidebar. So if we put all of our sidebar and our main content into this section and to the content we float it left and then apply our background, then we can see that on our page, it actually shows up as being a complete sidebar all the way down. But what's happening is the space that's behind here or that contains all of it is the content ID. And that's what actually has a solid green background. And if we were to take away the main content, we'd see that behind it, it is in fact green. So we still have a few more steps stylistically to go. But from here, you should be pretty comfortable to move on and finish everything else on your own. So that just leaves us with the very last step, which is taking the horizontal navigation, which was the new component of this site, and we want to add that in to our page right here. So we'll start with the markup, and we'll go back into our code and add in an unordered list with links right before the main content. So now we have our unordered list called nav, which should show up in our HTML as unformatted see it here. So now we just have to add the final formatting to make this appear across and be the color and the actual style that we want it here. So let's go ahead and add in that last bit of code. All right, in our last little segment of code here, we take our navigation, which we added to our HTML as an unordered list here, an ID of nav. And we're going to take, first off, the entire list itself, so the entire element that has the ID tag of name. We're going to float it left, we're going to put zero margin padding on the top and right and left and then set the width to 960 minus the padding for the right and left. For the list item we'll make sure that it's displayed none and what this does is remove the bullet icons from your lists in a browser natively. We also float it left and finally we come down to our image doing first the trick that we learned the other day with our block um, element links and in this case we are changing our link from inline to block and that's so that we could give it its own margin and padding on the top and bottom. We'll assign it the color from the mock-up as well as the background color, um, increase the font size a little bit, turn off the underline when they hover over it and then we're going to position it a certain number of pixels from the side of the screen. You'll also see that I added a little effect on the hover, and what this does is when you hover over the navigation, it gives you a little bit of lighting up. And it's really noticeable if you zoom in close, but if not, very subtle, nice little effect. So there you have it, how to build a very, very site with CSS and PNGs from Fireworks.